All right, here we are again. I, uh, I'm doing this crazy project to refresh this engine. And I've never done this before, so tonight I'm gonna try to measure the cylinder bores. Um, let's see, in the service, factory service manual, it says there's three groups of pistons. Group zero, I'm sorry, two, uh, yeah, three groups, zero, one, and two. And here's the range, the piston diameter. Um, and here is the bore, uh, cylinder bore that they match those pistons to. And I noticed that the other night. I was just looking at these pistons and uh, started to clean them up. And I took the rings off number one here. See where they mark a number one, number two number three looks like there's a date code of 1979 on here and on the top of the piston let's see if I can find it yeah so right there see that little two that's a number two on this one right here this one's dirty you see there is a number one and depending on the width of the piston is what they make the bore this one is really dirty um, let me just wipe some of this off it's got oil on it okay yeah I don't know if you can see that there it is that's also a number two and one of these let me wipe this one off Yeah, here we go. That's a zero. So that would be the smallest bore. And the last one's also a two. So I'm going to measure. This one's been cleaned up. Um, and everything really looks great on it. Uh, yeah, this was a number two. You can see it right there. So I'm going to try to measure this bore. So I ordered this really shitty set of um, telescoping gauges but really all it needs to do is be able to lock it in place so here's these telescoping gauges rather than trying to use a dial bore gauge because I had a cousin um, an older cousin who was an engineer with uh, I think Lockheed um, and he gave me these for fixing up his computers um, a lot of times that's what I do I work on computers and uh, so I fixed his computers all the time. He's like, here, take these. Um, so these are some old school outside micrometers. Like I said, I've never done this. So I got on the YouTube, <laughs> the YouTube, and uh, learned how to use one. Pretty straightforward. Um, it's probably going to be this one or this one. And I don't know if I can do this holding the camera. So I'll stop for a second. But basically, this goes down in the bore, um, and then you lock it in place. They're spring-loaded, so let me undo it here. Here we go. See, that's spring-loaded, and it's slightly rounded on the edge, so it fits into the bore. There we go. Oh, and you can, if you rock it back and forth, you can feel where it, yeah, you can feel it's not level. So it like loses a little bit of tension when it's not, there you go, that's straight. You can feel the tension change. Like I said, I really can't do this accurately with one hand. But I lock it in place, and apparently that's the bore. So I'm going to try this a couple times without recording and then measure it on the micrometer and we'll see how close I am. Oh yeah, this is a number two. So the cylinder diameter from the factory for a number two should be 90.918 to 90.928 millimeters. Um, so of course I'll have to do it in thousandths and then convert to uh, millimeters. I got a 
All right, I got a pretty good feel on that one. I've done it a couple of times off camera. Um, I can't hold this and do the camera at the same time. But this just fits in here. With a little bit of drag. Um, anyway, I, I can't do that with a camera. But it had just a little bit of drag in there. And what that measured on the micrometer, be cool if you can actually see this, I doubt you'll be able to. There we go. Five is visible, you can't see, but there's three tick marks after the five. So that's 500 thousandths plus 75 thousandths, and then um, we're just past five. So that's five thousandths. So 500, plus 75, plus 5 thousandths, and do that math, carry the 1, 7, 8, 5, so that's 3 inches and 580 thousandths. All right, I had to stop recording a second and go talk to Google. I just did the millimeters to uh, inches to millimeters conversion. So inches, millimeters, so that converts to 90.932 millimeters for a, the bore for fist piston 2 so my range is 90.981 to 90.928 and I'm 90.9 so the high end 90.928 and I'm 90.932 90.928 is factory, the max limit of the factory it says, and I'm 90.932. So I don't know if you read millimeters the same as, uh, as inches, but there's, that's four uh, thousandths. So, man, I would say, I don't know, that's not thousandths though because it's millimeters, but uh, who knows, I don't know how to read this, I've never done this. But I'm four, I'm four away in the thousandths decimal place. So that means my piston one, or my cylinder one, is at the factory. It's within, I mean, shoot, it's out of factory spec by four thousandths. I think I can deal with that. I'm not going to replace those sleeves. Well, we take that back. That's just uh, that's just one sleeve. So the next sleeve, let's go see what that piston was. So piston, you can see right there it has two marks. That's number two, and that has a one on it. So the cylinder is going to be a little different. So let's do cylinder two, and I need to fall within 90.908 and 90.918. I need to fall within that range. So I'm going to measure that one and see if we're in that range. This is cylinder two. Um, put that guy in there, and you can tell when you're rocking it back and forth, it'll be loose, loose, it'll tighten up, and then it'll go loose again. It'll tighten up, then it'll go loose again. So right there, right where it's tight. And I'm going to tighten the... All right. So when it's... I don't know if I can do this on camera. We're going to see what happens. Let's see. Yeah, there's no way I can do this on camera. So let me measure it, and I'll tell you what it measures. All right, we're back. Um, so I just measured that, and it came out to... There was a five showing, so that's 500 thousandths. There it is. 
Um, and then it was three ticks. See the tick? Uh, you can't see the tick marks on here. Each tick mark is 25 thousandths. So it measured three tick marks. And then on the, on the uh, thimble here, those tick marks are thousandths. So it measured four thousandths there. So what I came up with is nine, seven, five. So 3.979 inches. And if I convert that to metric, all right, there's a uh, method to my madness here. Cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four, cylinder five. How about we just make that consistent? Cylinder five. Now, let's see, cylinder one was a number two piston. Cylinder two was a number one piston. Cylinder three was a number two piston. Cylinder four was a zero size piston. And cylinder five was a number two. And the reason I point that out is because depending on the size of the piston, they expect a different cylinder di uh, diameter. But what I discovered, every single one of my bores are either 3.7, basically 3.790 uh, inches. Which, yeah, that one was 8079. Seven nine, seven nine, seven eight, seven nine. Basically, they were all almost exactly identical. Um, so basically, it's within spec based on the number uh, the number stamped on the piston. I think this was four thousandths over. This was in the range. It was uh, that's twelve thousandths less than the maximum range. Um, this one was a little tight for group number two. Um, this one was in spec within two thousandths. And then uh, so was this one. So basically all the pistons were basically 90.9066 millimeters. I'm sorry, not pistons, all the cylinders. And it's basically in spec. Um, the whole zero, one, or two size piston it doesn't appear that Mercedes really paid any attention to that because they after going through this a few times um, they all appear to be bored exactly the same uh, anyway so I don't need to replace these sleeves but I got a, uh, um, a ball hone and I'm gonna go put it says to put a 25 degree field service manual says put a 25 degree hone on the cylinder bores. Um, so I'm going to do that. Never done that before. We'll see how that works. I watched some YouTube videos and uh, to be honest with you guys, the rings on these pistons, I don't know if you can see that, but they look absolutely perfect. So I didn't want to order a set of $120 Mercedes rings and there was another brand that was like $120 per piston is what the Mercedes rings cost. Um, but uh, and then the generic brand or the you know the off brand was uh, like 30 bucks a piston. I was like, what's why is there such a huge difference in cost? So I didn't want to get the off brand. And then somebody pointed me to some uh, NOS Mercedes pistons still in the original boxes on eBay for $15 a piston. So I went ahead and got them because um, apparently these are, I mean, I've heard they're chromoly rings, not chrome plated, actual chromoly. Um, and a lot of machine shops have never heard of that. I, 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 you know, I've never heard of any of this. This is the first time I've done any of this. So uh, I did find some NOS rings. I'm going to measure the ring gap. All right. Today is exciting because one of the OM617 swap group uh, members um, saved me a lot of money 
He pointed me to these NOS uh, Mercedes rings, piston rings. So I'm going to open these guys up and um, measure the gap in these rings and see uh, see if how different it is from the rings that have 150,000 miles on them. Um, hopefully these things look pretty good. These are $120 per piston from Pelican Parts. And I got these for 15 bucks per piston. And I would say... Turn the light on here. So it looks like it's shiny there and some sort of coating or film on the outside of the ring. I guess that used to be, I don't know. Let's see what these things. Yep, that coating is on the outside of these too. But you can see on the rings that are in the engine, of course, it's shiny. But th those have 150,000 miles on it. Um, here's the oil. God, these look, these look good. So, just curious what the... It's like I said, it's shiny there and has like a black... Kind of sticky... Not sticky, it's just... Uh, it's not smooth, black coating right there on the edge. I'll look at the other ones too. But uh, I measured the ones in the engine. Let's see. And this first ring was 0.70 with the feeler gauge, 0.70 millimeters. Then the next one was 46 and 43. So I'm gonna get the uh, feeler gauges and see what this one measures so uh, I'll get the gauge put it in there and be right back all right this is a uh, 0.40 millimeter and that slips right in there Let's see if you can see it yeah pretty snug I bet you I could get a maybe a 41 in there but I'll say say 41 to go on the high side. That's a 40. I don't have a 41. I've got the original ring back in there, and this is a .70. And, yep, it just slides in there. Probably .69, .68. But, yeah, that, that fits, .70. So, there is a point, roughly a .30 millimeter difference between the gap on the NOS rings and the rings I had in the engine. Um, turns out the spec in the manual, field service manual, says 0 .40 should be the gap and that's exactly what it is with these NOS, well, at least with the top ring. So I'll go measure the other ones and uh, thank you guys for pointing me to these. I'm going to have uh, a better, much better engine with these uh, with these NOS piston rings. All right, today I'm honing the cylinders. I've already done the other ones. I'm just gonna do this last one. It says 25 degree crosshatch in the field service manual. And I figured out, I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. And I figured out that that's about like this. That is, puts about 25 degrees. Um, let me wipe this one out and just show you. And I, I only did it for about 10 seconds there. I had already honed it for about 15 seconds previously. I just wanted to show you guys. And I'm gonna clean these up real good, but I just want you to be able to see the cross hatch. And there you go. That's about a perfect 25 degrees. Um, it also removed the carbon along the top, so you can barely feel where the top ring used to land, but uh, there you go. 
Let me get from another angle and tilt the engine up <clears throat> so you can see, maybe you can see the 25 degrees better. Okay, you know what, it could be 30, 25, 30. Anyway, you guys get the idea. There you go. See it over here. I got to clean this one up. Now here's some I've, I've honed, but I did not clean up yet. So let's see what some of these look like. Tilt the engine back over here. And I just got some solvent from the wash tank and put it on a rag. I mean, you can see all the crap that it does re definitely remove material. So I'm going to measure the bores to see how much material it actually removes. All right, and I'll clean it up, you know, where there's nothing in there at all, but just trying to get the... Just so we can see the crosshatch pattern. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm going to tilt the engine up again. It's just easier to see when it's upright. There we go. All right, what do we got here? So you can see, there we go, there's my light. See, it removed a lot of the carbon off the top. There's still some left there. And there, there you can see the crosshatch there. Very mild degrees. It's not, it's not like 45 degrees. This one looks like I got a little steeper. That's the one I did on camera with one hand. So anyway, in this one, anyway, I'm going to clean these up real good and uh, then refit the piston ring and see if the gap changed. The new Mercedes piston ring, um, it's hot as shit out here, it's Georgia in September. But uh, the new piston rings, they had a tighter gap than the ones on the engine. The top one had a 40, 40 millimeters in the bottom. I mean, and the used one had 0.70. So now that I've honed it a little, I'm going to clean it up real good and see what the gap changes to. Hopefully it won't be much. All right, over the last couple of days, I've been measuring, measuring cylinders, and um, a person on the OM617 swap forum uh, hooked me up with a link on eBay for a set of NOS Mercedes piston rings for 15 bucks a piston. Uh, new from like Pelican Parts, it's 120 bucks a piston, so $75, and I got NOS Mercedes rings, which is awesome. Um, last night measured all the bores, and they are, I mean, exactly, uh, almost exactly in spec. Every bore is the same, within .001 to 003 millimeters. And then, um, but the rings, I just measured the top ring, uh, the gap on the top ring is a uh, 0.40. The rings off my used pistons measure 0 0.70 gap. So that tells me that it is the ring that wore a little bit and not the, uh, the ring wore more than the cylinder liner. Um, so these NOS rings, uh, awesome find. I wasn't going to change these until I saw them for 15 bucks each. You know, sorry for the bad camera work. And also, if my terminology is wrong, keep in mind I've never done any of this on an engine before. 
Um, I'm used to working in thousandths, not millimeters. So uh, anyway, enjoy the video.